That's a hell of a valentine. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 14 of Supernatural Season 5, My Bloody Valentine. It is, to me, one of my all-time favorite episodes of this show. I love everything about this episode. I love the fantastic combination of humor, horror, suspense, and action. I love the lore building. I love the turn on the idea of the famine horsemen. I love what happens to all the characters in it. I love the insinuations that are kind of given in this episode, even if season six would kind of directly contradict what is said in this episode, which I will get to in a minute. I like how this episode proceeds right from the beginning all the way to the end. And that's mainly because you've got a fantastic script written by Ben Endland. If I were to say of all of the scripts that he ever wrote, this is one of the best ones. The whole episode is just freaking perfect almost in terms of not being one of the season finale episodes, uh, not being a season beginner episode, but being just one of these episodes in the middle of the season that's just really fucking good. That is what my bloody valentine is. This episode is also directed by Michael Rawl, who actually did direct a lot of really good episodes of this show, and this is the best one he ever directed in my opinion, and I find this very funny that he would go from directing episodes like this of this show to being a regular director of When Calls the Heart. Hallmark's pinnacle show. It's such a divide. But this episode, starts off with a complete banger. You see these two couples come together, they say goodbye, but then they start to kiss and it gets a little bit more frisky than that. You're kind of like, okay, where's the ghost? And then they start to take bites out of each other. And then they proceed to eat each other to death. And you're already going, what the fuck is going on? And that is how you start an episode off right. Dig your little claws, your teeth into the audience with your opener and their hook for the rest of the episode. The brothers come to this town and they find that the people are killing themselves or dying in acts of excessive want, lust, need. Whether it's eating themselves to death, drinking themselves to death, or eating others to death. There is this incestual lust for cravings, wants, desires in this town. And it starts with a few, but eventually it grows to more and more, and it's all linking to famine, which leads me to one of my favorite little turns on the whole biblical lore of the Four Horsemen. Everyone else is kind of dead on to what you expect, but famine is the one that they got to be a little bit creative with. Instead of famine being literally people starving to death, they are starving for what they desire, so they will kill themselves eating what are taking and consuming that which what they are starving for. I love that little turn on it. It's a really creative twist and a creative angle from Ben. I, I gotta give him credit for that because it works towards everyone's desire of the main characters in this show. We see Sam get completely hungry for demon blood. We have Castiel go on a complete bender because his vessel, Jimmy, has a fascination with red meat and so he's eating burgers by the truckload. Apparently he gets into the little hundreds at one point in the episode. And we see this affect other people, not just the main characters, but different people. And they go for some pretty decent special effects. There's that guy who eats so many Twinkies that his stomach bursts, and you just see this giant bulge in his stomach. And we see the doctor drink himself to death. There is that guy who sticks his hands in the deep fryer and pulls them out and starts to eat the fries. And if you pause and you look, melting flesh on his hands is really well done like i gotta give the special effects guys and the special effects makeup artist credit because it looks really good and it's like a terrifying scene you're just like <gasps> and that's how a lot of the elements in this episode are but you also have to remember there's a fucking cupid in this episode i always forget the cupids here and i think I think, I think, if I'm correct, the whole Cupid angle does come back later on in the show. Not, not this season, but like way down the road. This Cupid guy is one of the funny bits of this episode. 
because like I said, Castiel's hunger is in this and it's actually really, really funny. There are a few other jokes talking about the whole uh, want, desire being funny, but then it gets really serious and it does a very, very good dip into serious. Once famine arrives, there's this frail looking old man who is just gnawing and brittle, but literally surviving by consuming everything that's around him and watching other people consume around him. I think it's a great representation of the character and I love his comeuppance. I love that he's literally defeated by the very thing that he wants. His own consumption is what defeats him because Sam is able to use the demon inside him to blow him to pieces. However, there is one little bit in this episode that has always kind of been a bit of contention with me is mainly for people who are all about the whole soulless Sam thing from season six. There is a conversation between Famine and Dean that is reflecting on the fact that Dean hasn't shown any signs of craving or anything throughout this whole episode. He just seems to be normal. And it's when Famine touches him, he says, you've got a big old nothing in there. You're broken. You have nothing. You just have no hope. You have no desire. You have nothing. And from my interpretation, re-watching it, maybe it's a little bit vaguer now, really listening to the dialogue. But what I've always gotten from that conversation is that Dean doesn't have a soul. Or he has a soul that is so utterly broken but I always got the idea that he didn't have one. And so that's why seeing Sam without the soul in the next season kind of always threw me off because I was like, well, what was this conversation here with Famine then? Why is it that a broken soul is apparently a means of not being able to be affected by it? I always just got the opinion that Dean didn't have a soul and that was why he wasn't affected. Admittedly now, watching the dialogue again, it's more kind of leaning towards a broken soul. But I'm kind of interested. Tell me what you guys think about that in the comments about this episode. If you guys always thought that he had a broken soul or he was soulless, what was your first interpretation from it? So yeah, really great pieces of dialogue here and there, a fantastic comeuppance for Famine, and then the episode ends with the brothers back at Bobby's house with Sam getting gold, uh, gold, gold turkey in the, in the the bomb room. So I, I love it. I love this episode right from beginning right to end, especially with Dean just looking up at the sky and just being completely hopeless. Considering you would think he'd be celebrating the fact that they just took down another horseman, but he's still hopeless because back on like what four episodes ago we saw him shoot the devil in the face and it didn't do shit. I like how this episode really reflects on the characters their emotions, their cravings, but also just their personalities in general and I love how they take down Famine, I, and I just love the interpretation of Famine. The horror, the humor, the action, the, the suspense is all top frickin' notch in this episode. It's one of my favorites that the show ever created, and that is why I am going to give My Bloody Valentine a 7 out of 7. It's a freaking neuron flawless episode. It is really, really damn good. I was very happy to watch this episode again. And I'm hoping that you guys share, if not at least understand where I'm coming from in terms of thinking how great this episode is. So without further ado, let's see what you guys have to say about this episode. My bloody Valentine, that was grim. Who are we when we are starving, lusting, and never satisfied? Well, we are monsters, of course. My only problem with this episode would be the absolute contradiction to free will and uniting John and Mary via Cupid. If they actually couldn't stand each other, and in this episode I am reminded that Supernatural could often be unnecessarily cruel. If there was no reason to portray the obvious love between John and Mary as a completely forced and, and therefore false, Cupid's arrow could have been characterized as an eye-opener that simply reveals the heart rather than what overrides it. This aspect of the episode undermines John's grief and his entire backstory if his love for Mary was nothing more than Heaven's con contrivance. Did Dad write that part of the episode? Funny, actually, I never thought about that. Um, I figured that it was mainly them getting together and staying together during uh, her hunter days because she was con she wanted to go back to being a hunter. 
But that actually is a decent point. Actually, yeah, no, I don't really have a counter for that, Shannon. You actually bring up a very good point about this episode. Supernatural, My Bloody Valentine is my second favorite episode up for the season. It is without a doubt the darkest episode ever shown from the show throughout 15 years. Call me biased, I feel like nothing can really top how dark this episode was. Once again, a town is dealing with a sociological issue from a horseman, except this was done fundamentally better in terms of how everyone's individual famine is their own destruction. I really love the editing and the cinematography and the music and the special effects. The dialogue is perfect when balancing out the humor and the dark tone overall, and it sets up why Sam is the only perfect vessel to contain Lucifer by taking in a ridiculous amount of demon blood in his system, which is an interesting thing that Lucifer has to do to maintain Sam to be his vessel. The end, where Sam has to go through the detox all over again and Dean begging God for help without an answer made this season utterly hopeless and heartbreaking, but in the best way possible. 100% Joe, you, you nail everything that I love about this episode as well. This is easily one of my favorite episodes of season 5 and Supernatural in general. This episode packs a lot of things into 40 minutes. You have a big revelation about John and Mary's love for each other, was all well orchestrated by heaven the whole time, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse storyline, the Sam uh, remaining addicted to demon blood, and Dean being dead inside. Each of the various plot beams seems like they should be in separate episodes, but the director and the writer of my Bloody Valentine managed to blend each so that it all fits and it works. The fact that Michael, Raphael, and other angels are essentially breeding the bloodlines that they want to see continue because they wanted the apocalypse to happen pretty much confirms the fact that angels are no better than Azrael and the other demons. The biggest highlight for me is without a doubt the Horseman Famine. What an amazing performance by James Otis. He was so damn creepy and frightening. Such a cool concept with the introduction of all kind of, the induction of all things hunger. He is my second favorite horseman. My favorite quote from him is, don't take much, hardly a push. Oh America, all you can eat all the time. Consume, consume, a swarm of locusts and stretch pants. And yet you're all still starving because hunger doesn't come from the body, it comes from the soul. Yes, I, that is a very great part of that episode. This episode gave a slightly different spin on Dean and Sam's relationship. The, episode, uh, the show has placed, uh, played up the tension between the two for a while, with Dean not trusting Sam and Sam being pissed at being treated like a child. But when Dean has a very little emotional break, as, a, as a, his own little emotional breakdown, and out of desperation prays to God at the end of this episode, it wasn't him being disappointed in his brother, it was him having absolutely no hope left in anything because of the way his brother was being used. Such a sad, sad scene. Very good acting from Jensen Ackles. All in all, perfect episode for me, 7 out of 7. But we agree on that. And yes, James Otis does a fantastic job in this. He's a fantastic character in this. Like, for a one-off episode, if I were ever to make a list of one-off characters, like characters that only ever appeared in one episode, Famine's probably in the top three, let alone the top five. My Bloody Valentine is one of my favorites of the season. I love Sam and Dean finding out their parents originally hated each other and the angels made them fall in love with each other because they needed to be born. The whole thing with Dean being empty inside, there's nothing that the horseman can use, it was so well done. Sam's appetite for the demon blood coming back was brilliant and one of the darkest episodes ever done. And yeah, no, 100%, I'm, I'm liking how you guys all agree with the darkness of this episode. They pushed it. They very much pushed the uh, the ratings that they could get for this episode. I'm amazed they didn't get it. They must have gotten in trouble for some of the stuff that happened in this episode. My Bloody Valentine 1. In contrast to what Michael referred to as God's plan unfolding, we find out that the angels prioritizing putting John and Mary together, manipulating their lives in a lot of ways. Michael is a very similar character to Lucifer. Both characters have manipulated the, the brothers' lives, both play the sympathy card and divert blame away from themselves and ultimately do so do much harm while while coming across as gentle too we will never see a nude cupid again after this episode i'm sure dean's fine with that oh okay so maybe i am wrong i swear i thought the cupid character came back that no he does but just not nude maybe uh three or two Yep, three, three. <laughs> okay, so three, part one. This episode was friggin' brutal, especially that opening scene with a couple eating themselves. This is probably the most hardcore horror scene of the season. That's something I missed about this show in the final years. Memorable opening scenes and a willingness to shock and horrify the audience. The last few seasons, it was very tame by comparison. 100%. They Really, they were more so going for 
like an uh, back, uh, comedy adventure show rather than a horror show. Like the show didn't scare me at all towards the end. This is a very strong story episode, well written and executed. But I didn't like how Dean's brokenness is convenient to him uh, to keep him from being affected by famine, which shouldn't be possible. But this is never addressed again in the series. It feels odd, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, and that kind of ties into my whole com comment about was what was the difference between Dean's brokenness and Sam having no soul. I thought that Dean's soul was so corrupted or gone from being tortured in hell that that's why he was the way he was, but hmm, I don't know. Two badass Sam moments. Wait your turn to the demon he's going to feed on, and then later when he stops famine. Despite having being everything stacked against him, Sam manages to take back control and say no to famine. This was a sign of hope that he could possibly change his future. The actors for all the horsemen were fire in their roles. Despite being a decrepit old man with nasty teeth literally bound to a wheelchair, Famine has so much presence he reminds me of the Emperor from Star Wars. He seems old and helpless but is actually extremely powerful and dangerous. The mystery of what the horsemen are actually is still unanswered and that makes these men all the more fascinating. 6 out of 7 for me. Yeah, that's what I kind of like. I don't know whether they were demons, whether they were reapers whether like whatever they were it's kind of cool that we never really 100 percent find out what exactly they are when i saw this episode i immediately thought to myself oh boy valentine's day episode to the cw get ready for cringe it kind of starts like that and then it becomes one of the most gruesome episodes in this series i mean jesus fucking christ this is insanity they actually made an episode about the dumbest american holiday actually entertaining. Famine is introduced and he is appropriately creepy as hell villain that the director takes full advantage of and uses every opportunity he has to make him look and behave even more unsettling. That scene where he reveals to Dean that he is so broken that he is basically dead inside is just breathtaking. Bonus points also for Demon Blood Sam. But the thing that we should appreciate about most about the Bloody Valentine is that it exists. You know why I love Supernatural, and especially for these earlier seasons, because they were made in an era where they didn't care about the SJW woke political propaganda that has infested entertainment today, and we could have fun all the way through. If this episode would air politically correct and woke for 2021, the censors and the SJWs would have cut and butchered it and make it all the more stupid for a political agenda. The line Famine says, don't touch a hair on that sweet boy, I'm 90% sure would have been twisted into some reference about Trump. Uh, it's episodes like these that remind me of the good old days and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, uh, like admittedly, yeah, there are some shows that are quite heavily affected by that. The Bat Woman show, um, I've worked with a few guys who have worked on that show and a lot of people say that they gag off to the side when they're reading the scripts. I do enjoy that there are certain shows that continue to kind of put press against stuff. Like, essentially, I like, I watch a lot of HBO um, shows for that. Like, for instance, The Watchmen one. I found that a lot of people got upset by that for supposed, like, propaganda stuff in it. But I thought it actually worked pretty well. It exactly worked into what the element of the show was. But no, I can see where you're coming from there. Um, there are certain shows that have been affected, particularly movies. I, I definitely found the Star Wars series got affected by that. My Bloody Valentine is a great episode, but also the most bloody to me. I laughed when Castiel thought that Cupid was go had gone rogue, and it was interesting seeing him having a craving for hamburgers. And it was so funny seeing Dean punch that angel when he finds out that angels had a big part in his parents ending up together. But also a sad at seeing Sam giving into his bloodlust for the demon blood and seeing Dan confront uh, Dean confront famine in the restaurant and famine telling Dean that the reason why he isn't being affected is because Dean is already broken inside and he was right unfortunately I, I was sad seeing Dean at the end of the episode begging for God to help him yeah no it's a whole, all in all 100% fantastic episode humor wise gore wise horror wise and emotionally story driven wise Alright guys, thank you for your comments. Now we've got the next episode here. We've got Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid. Anyways, give me your guys' comments about that episode and I'll read those off in the next review. Otherwise guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested in more, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign but we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.